and welcome back to Acorn Knits. My name is Natalia and I'm a knitter based in Sydney, Australia. So this episode is going to be a little bit different to my other ones um, where I normally talk about whips and stash acquisition. Instead, I want to talk about the Licker Ballwinder and Swift. I recently purchased this and I only received it about a week ago. I haven't used it yet, so I thought I'd test it out on camera, give a little review, and then at the end I'll just show a demonstration of how to assemble it because there were instructions of how to do so, um, but I didn't see them. So <laughs> I just thought for reference, if anyone um, would like to see a visual demonstration, I will do that. So as this is the first time that I'm gonna be using it, I thought it would be interesting to try out a few different yarns with it. So the first one I'm gonna do is the Snelden yarn. So I've spoken about this a few times. It's quite a rustic yarn, very toothy, very wooly. And so it'd be interesting, I think, to see how that one, how smooth it is in being skeined up. So what I'm interested about with this one is if there's going to be any issues with tangling or snagging, mostly because when I was casting on, the stitches almost sort of stuck to themselves when the yarn was passing over itself, just because they are so toothy, the scales sort of want to grip to one another like Velcro. So I'm interested to see how this performs on the liquor. I don't think there'll be any issues, but we'll see. The next one I've got is the Cascade Heritage Wave. So it's a superwash yarn with nylon in it. It's a sock base. So super, super silky um, and very, it's a, it's a fingering weight compared to the Snelden, which is a Aran weight or sort of heavy DK, I'd say. So I think that will be interesting as well. And so then the last one I thought I'd try is the avocado yarn that I dyed. So this one's also on a fingering weight, um, but it is 100% wool, uh, non-superwash. So maybe a little bit more similar to the Snelden, but definitely less toothy. And so with these three yarns, I think let's just get started. So I think I'll start with the avocado because it's sort of the mid-ground between the two, between something that's super, super silky and something that's very toothy. So we'll start with this one first. It's a little difficult to do one-handed. I think it'll be easier if you have a buddy to help, but um, we're gonna make this work. So I'm gonna hold this out towards me and then with my other hand, I'm gonna push the Swift up. There we go, perfect. All right, and then screw that in place. So I've got my tail here. I'm gonna wind it through there. I assume I'm doing this correctly, but you never quite know, do you? to worry. So all the furniture in our apartment is pretty much this walnut colour. I'm an absolute sucker for it. So I've put down a crochet doily that um, my great aunt made just to give a bit of differentiation between the walnut table and the walnut ballwinder and swift. So I'll show you this afterwards because it's a really beautifully hand crocheted um, doily. But I think more importantly let's get started with winding this up. This feels like magic. My God, after doing it by hand for so many years, is this how housewives felt in the 50s when their husbands bought them a KitchenAid? Like, how did I go my entire life without this? That's how I feel right now. The only thing is, I think because I do have it on this doily, it is slipping around a little bit. So I'm using my hand to stabilize it. <gasps> I hit my first snag. Oh, this is weird. It's almost like there's a gum in it. It was almost like there was gum that was sticking two of the pieces together, like a sap um, or a clear glue. That was really strange. Um, but I think that snafu is not going to stop us. I'm going to take the dolly away because it's slipping all over the place and uh, stabilizing it with a hand is not easy. Okay, that's so much easier <laughs> without the doily. <laughs> It's almost like an optical illusion. As I've been spinning, it looks like the yarn's about to pop off the top, like it's um, winding closer and closer to the edge. But then when I stop, there's at least, you know, a centimeter between where the yarn ends and the end of the... Oh, someone's not allowed to come in because someone has an issue with yarn that she will eat it and destroy it. So, sorry, Kiki. So definitely stabilize the ball winder. 
so you don't have a run-in with the swift. Uh, there we go. Nearly at the end. So I think first ball, no issues. The only issues I had were with the yarn itself. I think the Ball Wonder and Swift did an amazing job. died while I was filming that section. I'd given it a bit of a charge, hopefully that's going to be enough to get us through. So I think the first attempt with the avocado yarn went really well. Uh, it's wound out beautifully, it looks like a perfect little cake. Um, there was some snafus, but that was really to do with the yarn, um, no issue with the product whatsoever. So I think after that, I'm going to give the Snelden a go um, and do this one next. I've actually not been knitting too much on the Ranger cardigan solely because I haven't got um, any more skeins caked up and I didn't want to do it by hand and I thought I'll save it till I film this so let's give this one a spin. Just preemptively this will be interesting because it does have a few little kinky bits in it so let's just see if that impacts the wind at all. Unlike the avocado yarn, because this is so toothy, it's really sticking with the wood because it's polished on the outside, but the inside isn't. So it's really gripping to that natural texture and um, I don't need to hold it for the first few turns. This feels like a sheepy carousel <laughs> or some kind of amusement ride. I don't know if anyone else has this at a um, like a amusement park that they, they have in their local area, but um, we've got Luna Park in Sydney, which is a pretty famous uh, amusement park. The first one was in Melbourne, but we've got a we've got one in Sydney. The less creepy face, if I have to say so. Um, but there's one of the rides, I think it's called... I don't know if it had a name to do with like being anti-gravity, or if it was something about making you vomit. I'll put the name um, in here somewhere. Um, but it was one of those ones that... Uh, you have to stand up against a wall. It's like you're in a, like imagine a tin can. So you're in a, a circular room and you stand up against the wall and then it starts spinning really, really, really fast and then the floor beneath you drops um, and it uses gravity to keep you in place. And I remember like being able to, you, it's really hard to even just like lift your arm out straight. Oh, to like lift your arm out straight because there's so much pressure pushing you against the walls. Um, and I remember like being a kid and being able to like maneuver myself so I was upside down and you're obviously staying in place but then also a little part of me freaking out like oh what if they stop the ride suddenly and I'm upside down and I you know break my neck or whatever oh my god that finished up so quickly I guess it is a heavier weight oh my god no issues at all so perfect oh my god how did I live without this? I really don't know. So the last one I'll try is this Cascade Wave. And as I mentioned, it is super silky, sock base made with superwash merino and nylon. So I'll be interested to see how it feels. I was surprised how smoothly the Snelden went. For some reason, I was thinking that it would I don't know, I was just expecting more issues um, and there was none. It was great, it was so easy and so quick. Um, so I'll be interested to see how this one goes. Because I did buy one of these um, for a Christmas yarn and it was blue and red. And I was running it by hand and then something happened near the end. I think maybe, I think Kiki was trying to eat the yarn <laughs> while I was winding it and so I kind of rushed. And as a result, I got this terrible tangle. At least it was only maybe seven eighths of the way through. So I'd done most of the, the ball, but there was a bit left and I just, I tried to untangle it. I just made it worse. Um, so I've been thinking about just cutting out where the tangle is and then just winding up um, that little remainder. 
Okay, so this is much silkier than the Snelden, and there's no way this is gonna stay in place if I don't put my finger on it for the first few spins. So, spin it slowly. Just to hook that in, and I think it's good. I think we're good. Famous last words. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> I've got Kiki sitting opposite me, and um, if you don't know, Kiki is my one of my cats. I've got two. Uh, the, they're a brother and sister. They're both rag dolls. Um, both seal um, coloring, but in different um, patterning. So Kiki is a seal point. That's not true. Up is a seal point, and Kiki is a seal mitted. Um, but Kiki's the one who's obsessed with yarn. And right now she's sitting opposite me and staring intently at what's going on. I think she's, it's quite overwhelming because there's so much happening, but at the same time, I think everything in her is just like, I wanna eat it, give it to me. <laughs> but she's behaving herself, which is very out of character. So as a first time ball winder and swift user, one, this is incredible. I do not know how I went so long without it and I feel like now I've got it and never want to get rid of it or like I don't want anything to happen to it because it is just too good, too time saving. It is incredible. If you've been on the fence about buying one, I would 100% recommend it with absolutely no doubt. Go for it. If, you, if it's in your budget, I would say buy one. Particularly, I mean, I love this one. I'm sure there's plenty of really good ones out there, but I just couldn't go past such gorgeous craftsmanship, such a beautiful colour. Um, I'm a total sucker for walnut. And I have really nothing bad to say about this. The only thing that I would say is that, obviously like I mentioned, the doily is making it slip, um, but it was rocking backwards and forwards. Um, I think from the pressure of this moving, it was kind of, you can see they're lift, lifting up a little bit. Now that could just be that I'm, um, I don't know my own strength and I'm just putting too much muscle into it. However, I doubt that. I think it's maybe, um, it could use with a little bit of a clamp or something, or maybe if you just go a little bit slower. I also wonder if my positioning isn't right um, because the ball winder is so close to the Swift, if perhaps it should be further out, maybe at a different angle. I think that may have been contributing um, in part to the, to that kind of lifting of the ball winder. So to sum up the review, this is amazing. Love you, love you, cannot live without you. 10 out of 10, will recommend. So I think now I'll just do a little instruction of how to put it together. Um, if you didn't get instructions with yours or if you were like me and didn't even look for them properly, I think it would be nice um, just to have a little demonstration of how to um, assemble the ball winder. I can also show you the Swift, but I feel like that's pretty straightforward. It's really just um, putting screws in to tighten and loosen. So I'll show you how to put this together. <laughs> so these are all the pieces you'll need to put your liquid ball winder together. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in, just as long as they go where they need to go. And something I noticed after unpacking everything was that it does actually come with this clamp. So it's padded on the bottom and the top, so when you clamp it onto a table, it's not gonna scuff it in any way. Had I seen that, I wouldn't have had the issue with the ball winder lifting up while I was winding. So I think let's just get started and put everything together. So you can see here, there's a taller metal part sitting up and a smaller one. So this section here goes on the taller one. Then to secure it, you use this piece here just thread that on. Next, I'll put on the winder. And on the bottom, there's a little hole. It just sits right on top of that smaller section there. To join them together, you'll need the rubber piece. It's quite stretchy, so you can just put that over the back and then around here. And you can see already you've got that in motion. Next is attaching this part here. In order to do so, you'll need to lift this section up, throw that on, drop it down. So the last three parts are these pieces here, kind of like a fancy cigarette holder, a rook, and a flat piece. So first, screw the cigarette. You can see there's some gold threading. It just goes in there.
and then to secure it onto the ball winder, there's this piece here and there's some threading just at the bottom here. So there's a little crook that they've already cut out so it's really easy to know where to put it. And then just screw that in. And so that's your liquor ball winder and Swift. I think the battery's really low, so I'm gonna say goodbye now in case it dies before I'm able to give proper send off. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful week filled with lots of making and I'll see you next time. Bye.